Hello everyone, welcome to another video from the tutorial series SM Plus Mastery and Certification. My name is Dabish. In this video, we will learn how to solve different reactor models using SM Plus version 14. In fact, there are 8 reactor models in the reactor palette and those can be broadly categorized as the kinetic reactors and non-kinetic reactors. In this video, we will stick to non-kinetic reactors including stoichiometric reactor, yield reactor, equilibrium reactor and the Gibbs reactor. And in the next video, we will learn how to solve kinetic reactors including continuous stir tank reactor, plug flow reactor, batch reactor and the electrolyzer. Before hands-on practice for this video, let's have a quick background about different reactor models, specifically emphasizing on the simulation approach and limitation of these reactor models. These are 8 reactor models in SPM+. The kinetic reactors are CSTR, plug flow, batch and electrolyzer. We will have a comprehensive discussion on these reactors in the upcoming video. The non-kinetic reactors involve the equilibrium simulation approach or non-equilibrium simulation approach. The stoichiometric reactor and the yield reactor are the basic reactor models and they rely on the fractional conversion or extent of reaction in case of stoichiometric reactor and the yield distribution of the products in case of yield reactor. Stoichiometric reactor does require the stoichiometry of the involved reactions. However, yield reactor does not require the stoichiometry of the involved reactions. Similarly, the equilibrium reactor requires the stoichiometry of the involved reactions and determines the product based on the equilibrium coefficient calculated using Gibbs free energy. Whereas the Gibbs reactor, it does not require the stoichiometry of the involved reactions and the product distribution is determined based on the Gibbs free energy minimization procedure. This model is capable of simulating the reaction equilibria as well as the phase equilibria. The kinetic reactors are rather more practical, however involves the idealistic approach about the fluid dynamics and recently SPM Plus introduced a reactor model to simulate water electrolysis based on the electrochemical information of the electrolysis reaction for the production of hydrogen. So how would you decide which of these reactor model is most appropriate for your simulation study? Let's have a look on this flowchart. While selecting any of the available reactor model, first information you have to know is whether the reaction kinetics are available or not. If the reaction kinetics are available, then you have the option to choose either the steady state reactor including RCSTR and R plug or unsteady state reactor that is R batch. In case no information about the reaction kinetics is available, then you need to decide whether the reaction approaches equilibrium or not. In case of equilibrium, you have the option to choose between equilibrium reactor and the Gibbs reactor. Equilibrium reactor is selected when the equilibrium is involved as well as stoichiometry of the involved reaction is available. If the stoichiometry is not well known, then you will proceed to the Gibbs reactor. In case of non-equilibrium, you have the option of R stoic and R yield. R stoic is used when the stoichiometric information is known. Otherwise, you can select R yield. So the R yield reactor is selected when you are unaware of the reaction kinetics, no equilibrium is involved and no information about the reaction stoichiometry is available. So this is the simplest reactor model that is entirely based on your input information about the yield distribution of the products. Otherwise, you will use the stoichiometric reactor for the non-equilibrium case and between Gibbs reactor and the equilibrium reactor in case of equilibrium. Beside the information of the selection of reactor model, let's also have a look on the basic concepts and definition of the reaction chemistry. Let's consider a very simple case where A number of moles of reactant A are converted into the B number of moles of the product B and C number of moles of the product C. So for this very simple reaction, you may involve the terms including conversion selectivity and the yield of the reaction. So at time zero, when no reaction is involved, then you have entirely the reactant A 
However, after some time, the reactant A is converted into the product B by product C and some of the reactant remains unconverted. So for this situation, the conversion of the reactant will be number of moles of the reactant A in the feed stream minus number of moles of the reactant A in the product stream divided by number of moles of the reactant A in the feed stream. So based on the number of moles of reactant A between feed stream and the product stream divided by the same number of moles in the feed stream defines the fractional conversion of reactant A. And in this case, almost 10% of reactant A remains unconverted and 90% of reactant A is converted into the product B and the product C. Assuming that out of 90%, 72% product is the product B and 18% of the product is product C, that defines the yield of the product. So yield is defined as number of moles of the product formed divided by number of moles of the product formed if the reaction was considered ideal reaction in favor of the same product. So the ideal consideration will be based on two factors. So the first condition will be complete conversion of the reactant into the product and second consideration will be no byproduct formed from that reaction. That will be the ideal condition for the formation of the desired product. In the given situation, 72% product is the desired product. So that defines the yield of the product B as 72% and 18% is the yield for the product C. Based on these informations, you can define the selectivity of the product. So the selectivity is the ratio between the desired product divided by undesired product. In this case, 72 divided by 90 will proceed to the 80% selectivity of product B and 18 divided by 90 will proceed to the 20% of the selectivity of product C. You may encounter another term while simulating the reactor models and that is the extent of reaction. Extent of reaction is rather simple term and homogeneous for all the reactants or the products involved in the given reaction and that defines the number of moles formed or consumed divided by the stoichiometric coefficient of the respective reactant or product and this number will remain the same regardless of the discussion of reactant or the product. For instance, while discussing the number of moles of A consumed in the reaction Difference of the number of moles in the feed and the product divided by the stoichiometric coefficient that is in fact the number of moles of the reactant A in the stoichiometric equation will define the extent of that reaction. Let's consider following case study to solve non-kinetic reactors. Ethylene glycol is produced by direct hydration of ethylene oxide as mentioned in the first reaction where ethylene oxide reacts with water to produce ethylene glycol. The reaction proceeds in the liquid phase without any catalyst at a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. Besides the main reaction, subsequent hydroxylation of ethylene glycol for the formation of diethylene glycol or higher glycols can also take place. One of the side reaction is mentioned here, where ethylene oxide reacts with the product from the first reaction ethylene glycol to form a byproduct diethylene glycol. To prevent the subsequent reactions in the formation of byproducts, process is generally carried out with the large excess of water. It is also mentioned that the conversion of ethylene oxide into ethylene glycol is 95% and conversion of second reaction based on ethylene glycol is 5%. Besides, it is also mentioned that the mole ratio of ethylene oxide to water is 1 ratio 12. Ethylene oxide and water enters the reactor at 25 degrees Celsius and 3 megapascal pressure, whereas the reactor temperature is 200 degrees Celsius at a pressure of 3 megapascal. Based on this information, you are asked to calculate the composition of the reaction products. The heat of reaction of both of these reactions, if reference temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, pressure is 101.325 kPa and the reference phase is considered as liquid. Also, you are asked to calculate the composition of the reaction product considering equilibrium at 200 degrees Celsius and 3 MPa pressure. This case study is taken from the textbook 
केमिकल प्रोसेस डिजाइन एंड सिमुलेशन एसपन प्लस एंड एसपन हाइस एप्लीकेशन यू मे हैव अ लुक इन टू द कॉन्टेंट ऑफ दिस टेक्स बुक फॉर फर्दर प्रैक्टिस सो लेट्स ओपन एसपन प्लस एंड सॉल्व दिस एक्सरसाइज लेट्स पर सी टू अड्यू सिमुलेशन विदाउट सिलेक्शन ऑफ एनी डिफॉल्ट टेम्पलेट एज कॉम्पोनेंट इन्वॉल्व इन द रिएक्शन लेट्स एड फर्स्ट कॉम्पोनेंट एथलीन ऑक्साइड to narrow down the search let's put search criteria to equal ethylene oxide and find now add ethylene oxide to the component list search for ethylene glycol add to the component list search for diethylene glycol add to the component list and the fourth component is water in this case add to the component list so the component selection is done Let's lightly rename the components for better identification. Let's put ethylene oxide to eth oxide, ethylene glycol to eth glycol, and diethylene glycol. Also, I would like to mention water at the second place since this is also a reactant for the first reaction. For that purpose, let's reorder, put the water at second place. This is only a cosmetic step. for the better presentation let's proceed to the method selection let's add nrtl with radlich wong equation of state proceed to the next and run the properties environment so the required properties are available if you notice that the binding interaction parameters of nrtl are not available for all possible pairs in that case let's check estimate using unifac to estimate any missing binding interaction parameter let's proceed to the simulation environment draw the flow sheet here is the reactor model palette including all eight reactor models first four reactors are the non kinetic reactors and rather hypothetical reactors and the remaining four reactors are the kinetic reactors let's choose stoichiometric reactor since conversion is known and the reaction stoichiometry is also given since we'll try multiple reactors let's put a stream duplicator so that we don't need to define feed stream again and again define a feed stream connect the duplicator to stoichiometric reactor and take one product stream out of it as two stream is not connected in that case either right click go to reconnect and reconnect the destination or you can double click on the arrow button and it will activate the connection to the input port of the reactor so the flow sheet is complete and you are ready to define the inputs before that let's rename the labels p to the feed stream let's put f1 for the feed stream to the reactor model from the duplicator block name the duplicator block to dupl rename the reactor model to r stoic and rename the product stream to that say p stoic control a and control b proceed to the input form define the conditions of the feed stream where it's entering at 25 degree celsius and 3 megapascal flow rate is not specifically mentioned however it is mentioned that the ratio of ethylene oxide to the water is 1 ratio 12 so let's define 100 kmoles of ethylene oxide and 1200 kmoles of water you can have a different streams for the ethylene oxide and a different stream for the water let's proceed next to the block information here you need to define the operating conditions of the stoichiometric block you can define the flash type in case of isothermal operation you can define the temperature and the pressure or in case of adiabatic conditions you can define the duty equal to 0 and the operating temperature since we are given with the operating temperature as 200 degree celsius and the operating pressure is 3 megapascal reaction occurs in the liquid phase so you can have only liquid phase involved in the reactor next you need to define the reactions in case of non kinetic reactors having stoichiometric information you can directly define the reactions within the reactor model otherwise you need to define the reactions externally in this folder that will be the case of kinetic reactors and we will discuss it in the next video for this exercise let's define first reaction where one mole of ethylene oxide reacts with one mole of water moles are defined by the coefficient 
for the reactant have a minus coefficient and for the product for the first reaction it's ethylene glycol and one mole of ethylene glycol is formed as hydration of ethylene oxide conversion of the first reaction is 95 percent or in terms of fractional conversion let's put 0.95 based on the limiting reactant that is ethylene oxide so in the information of first reaction is complete let's add another reaction where ethylene oxide reacts with the product from the first reaction ethylene glycol the coefficients are minus one minus one for both of these reactions and this reaction proceeds to the formation of diethylene glycol fractional conversion of this reaction is 0 0.05 based on diethylene glycol information desired for the second reaction is also complete so we have two reactions required inputs incomplete and we are ready to run the simulation two very important things you must notice at this page first is the numbering for the reactions this is typically important if you have reactions in series and the second is whether the reaction occurs in series or not let's first try what happens if we don't consider this a series reaction let's run the simulation results are available you can notice stream results in this folder and the model results in the results section notice the operating temperature feed stream is entering at 25 degrees celsius and reaction occurs at 200 degrees celsius so the product stream from the r strike is at 200 degrees celsius pressure is 3 megapascal at 30 bar phase is liquid some other thermodynamic informations let's see the number of moles formed for each of the product oops you can notice that with the 95 percent conversion of ethylene oxide into the products indicates 95 kilomoles per hour of ethylene glycol however no product formation of diethylene glycol is calculated in this case so the primary mistake is since ethylene oxide converts into the ethylene glycol and ethylene glycol is converted into the diethylene glycol and both of these reactions are in series so don't forget to check the reaction occurs in series for all the situations like this let's rerun the simulation and we have the products let's have a look on the steam results so based on the mole flow now only 0.25 kilomoles per hour of ethylene oxides leave unconverted 90.25 kilomoles per hour of ethylene glycol is formed and 4.75 kilomoles per hour of diethylene glycol are formed and these are pretty understandable based on the input information of the conversion of the two reactions so 95 percent ethylene oxide was converted into the ethylene glycol so out of 95 kilomoles per hour of ethylene glycol 5 percent that is 4.75 kilomoles per hour are converted into the diethylene glycol along with the consumption of additional 4.75 kilomoles per hour of ethylene oxide so the remaining ethylene oxide is 0.25 kilomoles per hour you can also have a look on the heat of reaction here the heat duty is given let's change it to kilojoules per hour so 8.91 into 10 to the power 6 kilojoules per hour heat is produced during this exothermic reaction you can also check mole balance mass balance and the energy balance let's have a look into the reactions tab where the extent of reactions is given so the extent of first reaction is 95 kilomoles per hour and the extent of second reaction that corresponds to the 5 percent conversion of the product from the first reaction is 4.75 kilomoles per hour so this is how you can solve the stoichiometric reactor with the information of fractional conversion alternatively you can solve the same problem by having information of extent of reaction instead of the conversion for that case put molar extent instead of the fractional conversion so the molar extent of the first reaction is 95 kilomoles per hour and the molar extent of the second reaction is 4.75 kilomoles per hour if you run the simulation check the results you end up with the same flow distribution of the reactants and the products in the product stream so either by defining the molar extent or defining the fractional conversion for the given stoichiometry of the involved reactions 
you can solve the stoichiometric reactor. Now let's see how to solve yield reactor for the same case study. Yield reactor does not require the stoichiometry as defined in the stoichiometric reactor. However, it does require the yield distribution of the product stream. And it's little strange how SPM Plus defines the yield of the products. Let's first build the flow sheet, rearrange the existing flow sheet to make a room for the yield reactor. Go to the reactor palette, grab the yield reactor and place in the flow sheet window. Take the material stream from the duplicator and attach it to the input port of the yield reactor. So you can add one or multiple feed stream for the yield reactor. And similarly, you can take one or multiple product stream from the yield reactor. So all the connections of the yield reactor are complete. Let's slightly rename the feed stream as well as product from the yield reactor. Also rename the block as R yield. Press Ctrl A to select the flow sheet, Ctrl B and Ctrl J. Still, two reactor models overlap each other. Let's take the stoichiometric reactor and move it slightly above. Again, Ctrl A and Ctrl B and Ctrl J. So let's move to the yield reactor for the input specifications. Here you need to define again the flash conditions just like the stoichiometric reactor. For the given case, the temperature of the yield reactor is 200 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 3 megapascal or you can define it as 30 bar. Valid phase is again the liquid phase. Operating conditions are defined. Let's move to the yield. Here you need to define the yield of the involved components in the product stream. Otherwise you can define yield in a subroutine or you can define component mapping or petro characterization in case of petroleum simulation. Let's move with the component shield. As you can notice, you need to select the components. So these are all the components that you are expecting in the product stream. So list on all the products in the product stream. You need to define the basis of the yield. So available bases are either mole base or the mass base. If there is any inert component in the feed stream, then you need to define it as inert component in the drop down menu over here. Then you need to define the basis yield. Basis yield is in fact moles of the component per unit total mass of the feed stream excluding inert components. Considering the previous case of stoichiometric reactor, let's see how should you define the yield basis. So here in case of ethylene oxide, 0.25 kilomoles of ethylene oxide leaves in the product stream. Total mass of the feed stream is 26,023.7 kilogram per hour. So on mole basis, the yield basis as required in the yield reactor is 0.25 divided by 26,023.7. Similarly, the yield basis for water, ethylene glycol and diethylene glycol can be defined. So let's first calculate the yield basis of all the components and then see what numbers have to be defined in the input form of yield reactor. Let's paste all the flow rates in the excel sheet. Also write total mass flow of the feed stream and that is equal to 26,023.7 kilogram per hour. So for the basis yield, it will be equal to number of moles of the component leaving in the product stream divided by total mass of the feed stream and that is the basis yield required as input condition in the yield reactor. Similarly, you can calculate the yield basis for the other components as well. So these are the basis yields. Let's copy the same information and put it in the basis yield in the yield reactor. There is no inert component for this simulation and we are ready to run the simulation. So the simulation is complete. However, results are available with the warning. Let's first have a look what the warning is. For that, go to the results section and in the status. Otherwise, you can directly check the status. So the warning is specified yields have been normalized by a factor of 0.99998. So that is pretty close to 1 to maintain an overall material balance. We'll discuss it again. But first, let's have a look on the stream results. Go to the mole flow distribution of the product streams. For comparison, let's also display the product from the stoichiometric reactor. 
so they are pretty same let's also have a look on the heat of reaction let's put it in kilojoules per second so heat of reaction is the same as found in case of stoichiometric reactor let's make a slightly intentional mistake just to see what the warnings may appear in case of yield reactor let's slightly change the yield of ethylene oxide from 10 to power minus 6 to 10 to power minus 5 and run the simulation once again still results are available however with the warning so what we have done we have changed the output number of moles of ethylene oxide whereas the rest of the number of moles are the same and the flow rate of the feed stream is also the same what we are doing we are intentionally doing a mistake in the product formulation let's have a look what are the warnings this time so now two warnings appear so this is a very common case while using the yield reactor that you end up with the two warnings first warning is about overall material balance and the second warning is about element balance as we have discussed earlier the yield reactor is not a physical reactor it's purely a theoretical reactor and follows what you guide to produce as the product stream it does not take care of the stoichiometry and it does not take care of any of the other thermodynamic constraints to better understand what does it mean by these warnings let's generate the report generate the report only for yield reactor so here you can follow mass and energy balance and also you can follow component balance so carbon in the feed stream is 200 kilomoles per hour however in the product stream it's 203.7 kilomoles per hour and in total there is a net generation of carbon similarly there is a net consumption of hydrogen and net consumption of oxygen that is practically impossible and violates the mass conservation so this is a very flash case of the common saying of garbage in garbage out for the simulation softwares in case of yield reactor you can demand any product stream regardless it follows the conservation laws or not then the question is what is the use of having a yield reactor in the simulation the most common use is when you have the experimental data from a complex reaction chemistry and you are not very much clear about the reaction scheme by which reactants are converted into the products then you can use the yield reactor for simulation classically in the large flow sheet still you may face a slight difference of the component balance the better input conditions are for the yield reactor better will be the yield distribution of the product stream that is close to the reality the first warning is regarding the material balance based on the yield distribution aspen normalized the results by multiplying with the factor of 1.00381 to have exactly the same mass in the output stream as the mass of the feed stream you can check the balance the mass inlet is the, exactly the same as the mass outlet aspen reported this number in the outlet stream by multiplying with the correction factor as shown in the status so this is how you can use yield reactor for the simulation of a complex reaction conversion process when the reaction scheme is not available as far as possible the yield reactor should be used very carefully so as to avoid the violation of laws of thermodynamics let's also practice equilibrium reactor to see whether the conversion shown by the stoichiometric reactor and the yield reactor are practically feasible or not before that let's change the yield to the original condition that is tends to power minus 6 go to the flow sheet add equilibrium reactor add the material stream from the duplicator to the inlet port of the equilibrium reactor here you can notice a difference of equilibrium reactor from the stoichiometric reactor and the yield reactor for equilibrium reactor you have to have a vapor stream connected as well as a liquid stream connected because by default equilibrium reactor performs calculation of phase equilibria as well as reaction equilibria change the label of input stream to f3 product stream to let's say vapor product from the equilibrium reactor and the liquid product from the equilibrium reactor also change the label of the reactor to r equilibrium go to the equilibrium reactor input form 
here again the flash conditions are 200 degree celsius and 30 bar or you can define it as 3 megapascal also the involved phases are only the liquid phase and move to the reaction tab here you need to define the reactions just like in the stoichiometric reactor the first reaction is between ethylene oxide and water where one mole of each component reacts together to form one mole of ethylene glycol reaction is defined and you need to define the basis by which aspen plus will calculate the equilibrium there are two possible options in the equilibrium reactor first is the same as of the stoichiometric reactor that is defining the molar extent while defining the molar extent aspen plus will calculate the products just like the stoichiometric reactor alternatively you can treat it like an equilibrium reactor where equilibrium coefficients are calculated from the gibbs free energy of the involved reactant and the products and establish thermodynamic equilibrium of the chemical reaction and generate the mole flow rates of the product stream by default equilibrium reactor assumes that the reaction will approach the equilibrium conditions regardless of the time required to reach the equilibrium conditions alternatively you can guide the equilibrium reactor by taking an offset from the equilibrium condition that is practically feasible in a fair amount of time and that is defined by the temperature approach so temperature approach is the offset from the equilibrium temperature that is practically feasible in a fair amount of time you can take a fair assumption of 5 degrees or 10 degrees offset from the equilibrium conditions that is 200 degrees celsius in this case you can also put a negative number or a positive number to define whether the offset should be positive or negative from the equilibrium condition if you are not confident to put a positive or negative offset from the equilibrium temperature then you can randomly put a number and verify from the equilibrium distribution so the conversion of non-equilibrium reaction cannot be more than the conversion of the equilibrium reaction so by that judgment criteria you can take a rather practical approach to define the temperature approach in the equilibrium reactor meanwhile to facilitate besides you don't need to define anything for the reaction let's also define the second reaction and that is the reaction between ethylene oxide and the ethylene glycol one mole of both of these components reacts to produce one mole of diethylene glycol in case you are dealing with the equilibrium reaction of the solid phase then you have to define the phase as well let's proceed with the same conditions and you are ready to run the simulation so by default results are available however with an error let's have a look what the error is block equilibrium reactor is not in mass balance check stoichiometry or molecular weights this is pretty common in case of equilibrium reactor when you are using the default conditions of zero temperature approach then the reactor fails to converge in a given number of iterations a good remedy is to give a fair estimate of the extent of reaction so let's give a fair estimate of 80 kilomoles per hour of the first reaction and 15 kilomoles per hour of the second reaction again these are only the estimates aspen plus takes these estimates as the initial values to get to the equilibrium let's close the windows and run the simulation once again so now the results are available let's first have a look on the stream results as you can notice no information of the vapor product stream is available that is because of the a priori definition of the involved phase that is liquid check the flow rates of the product stream to give a good comparison let's also equate with the product of the stoichiometric reactor so apparently it feels that the equilibrium conversion is slightly different from the conversion as defined in the problem statement meanwhile you can also check the results of the heat duty this is also slightly different from the heat duty of the stoichiometric reactor you can check the equilibrium coefficients the equilibrium coefficient for the first reaction and the second reaction at 200 degrees celsius is also given similarly let's first learn how to solve the gibbs reactor and then we will come back to the discussion about the expected and realistic results of the product flow rates grab the gibbs reactor attach the material stream from the same duplicator block 
to the input port of the Gibbs reactor. You can also add one or more of the product streams. Give the name of the feed stream as let's say F4 and the product stream as product from Gibbs reactor. Name the block as R Gibbs. Let's go to the input form of Gibbs reactor. Again, you have multiple calculation options. You can only consider phase equilibrium or you can determine phase equilibrium as well as chemical equilibrium or you can use calculation approach of reaction extent or specify duty and temperature for the restricted chemical equilibrium. Let's proceed with the phase equilibrium as well as chemical equilibrium. Give the pressure to 3 MPa and temperature equal to 200 degrees Celsius. You can add multiple phases. That will make sense if you have multiple product stream from the Gibbs reactor. Also don't forget to check or uncheck the vapor phase. By default, Gibbs reactor involves the vapor phase because it is very commonly used for high temperature gas phase reactions. So that could be a probable reason to check this option by default. Since for this example, the reaction phase is liquid, uncheck the vapor phase inclusion. If you are dealing with the solid solutions, then give a due consideration to this checkbox. Once you have defined temperature and pressure, let's proceed to the products tab. Here you have primarily two options to identify what should be the products that ASMA Plus considers for the calculation of product flow rate using Gibbs free energy minimization approach. By default, all the components defined in the component list are considered as the probable products. Otherwise, you can specify what should be the product components and the corresponding phase in which the product should appear. Let's proceed with the default consideration of all the components as the probable products. You can run the simulation. So the results are available. Only the previous warning with the yield reactor appears. Let's go to the stream's results. The phase is still the liquid since we have excluded the vapor phase. Also, you can cross check the mole flow rates. To give a good comparison between the product flow rates from all these four reactors, let's display the product streams side by side. Product from the equilibrium reactor, product from the stoichiometric reactor and product from the yield reactor. In all cases, the phase is liquid. You can notice a slight difference in the energy values. But more importantly, let's have a look on the product flow rates. In the stoichiometric and yield reactor, unconverted ethylene oxide is 0.25 kilomole per hour leaving in the product stream, whereas only traces of ethylene oxide leaves when the equilibrium is considered. So that means conversion of ethylene oxide into the products is underestimated by, by defined conversion in the problem statement. That is a reasonable assumption since it's hard to reach the equilibrium conditions for most of the reactions, especially when the reaction kinetics are relatively slow. Similarly, water consumption in the equilibrium reactor is also less compared to non-equilibrium reactors. Ethylene glycol formation is higher at equilibrium compared to the defined conversion and production of diethylene glycol is lesser at equilibrium compared to the non-equilibrium reactor. So that is practically not feasible. Since maximum yield or selectivity of diethylene glycol can be obtained at equilibrium conditions, anything more than the equilibrium flow rate of diethylene glycol is the violation of loss of thermodynamics. That clearly indicates that though the conversion of the first reaction is a reasonable assumption in a series of two reactions. However, the defined conversion of the second reaction is practically not feasible. As far as the product streams from the stoichiometric reactor and the yield reactor does not violate loss of thermodynamics, you can proceed with the simulation of the flow sheet. However, in case it is identified that the defined conditions in the stoichiometric and yield reactor violates the loss of thermodynamics, that can be checked by installing a Gibbs reactor or equilibrium reactor. You have to rethink about the input conditions of non-equilibrium reactors. For detailed comparison of the results of all these reactors, you can generate a report including all the reactors and compare the results from the each reactor. This is a very comprehensive report including input information as well as the simulation results. In this video, we have learned how to simulate stoichiometric reactor, yield reactor, equilibrium reactor and Gibbs reactor. 
In the next video, we will consider the kinetic reactors and specifically emphasize on reaction kinetics and simulation of ideal reactor including continuous stir tank reactor and blood flow reactor. To manage the duration of the tutorial, batch reactor sizers will be considered in another video tutorial.